all, 11th of December 2017, you're here with Dan in Essex, UK, in the Poly Tunnel. To have some more snowfall, you can just hear it now. And what I thought I'd do is have a scout around, have a look around and see what's going on and do a bit of planning. So I thought I'd take you around with me and uh, just give you a brief chat. So, Lake Mont Seedless Grapevine Cuttings, spoke a lot about them before, so I won't go into those today. Now, the Dixie Red Peach Tree, I'm very fond of this tree, as my long-term viewers will know. It's a self-fertile variety, very important if you're growing it within a polytunnel, because the bees generally don't get in here so much unless I leave the door open. But uh, door's closed, as you can see, and this will come out in blossom probably around March time. Peach trees tend to come out a little bit earlier than most, particularly if they're grown in a polytunnel, obviously because the temperature is warmer. But even so, even if they're outside, they tend to blossom a little bit earlier, which can be an issue with frost damage, etc, etc. But uh, growing it within here in order to avoid peach leaf curl. Not going to explain too much about that right now, but uh, I have a video how to avoid peach leaf curl. Check it out if you're going to grow peaches in the UK or similar climates. Very important because peach leaf curl, <coughs> excuse me, peach leaf curl can lead to death of the tree and you really don't want that. A great specimen here of a cherry tree. Variety Stella, Canadian variety, self-fertile once again. And this will probably come out in blossom and leaf probably around April, May time. Again, earlier in the polytunnel than it would be outside because it's warmer and the heat acts as a catalyst and can bring things on a little bit earlier. So that's all looking good as well. In this spot here is another tree going to go and it's probably going to be either a persimmon tree it will be a dwarf one, obviously, because it's in the polytunnel. Or another cherry tree. I'm very fond of cherries, and I find them a great thing to grow because they can be expensive, you know, and they're lovely tasting fruit, aren't they? I'm thinking of variety Napoleon. What I want is a really dark, sweet cherry. So, if one goes there and one goes there, we shall see. But, uh, you know, at the moment, it's sort of a decision between a persimmon, otherwise known as Sharon fruit, which I've done videos on in the past before, or a cherry. So we'll see. Obviously one great thing about growing cherries in a polytunnel is if you've grown <coughs> cherries before, or you've got a cherry tree somewhere, or you even watch a cherry tree out in the community somewhere, highly likely you'll see the birds strip the cherries even whilst they're still green. Of course, growing them within a polytunnel as long as you keep the door shut etc etc you're far far less likely to get damaged by birds and your crop eaten so here you go another tree here this is a pear tree variety concord great variety self fertile and does well in the UK climate haven't got much space here and it's a small tree, this is about five, six years old. I've got a video on this tree, and it, I call it the tree that never grows, which is perfect for where it is, because I can't uh, let a tree get big here. So have a look at that. Nice fruit buds as well, and expecting this to do well. I had some great, great uh, pears off of this last year. Got some videos on that. Had about nine off of it, and they were big, sweet pears. Absolutely beautiful. I do like a nice pear, ha ha. Right, and what have we got here? We have got here a plum tree variety jubilee. Large fruits, apparently. Got this from a company called Mail Order Trees. There you go. Buy one, get one free, along with a Worcester pearman apple, which we will uh, go into in a minute. But uh, this is self fertile and it's said to be a better flavour than Victoria plums, which is quite a boast. Generally, you know, we do a lot of comparison with uh, Victoria plums, etc, etc, and I've just seen something very annoying. This is a, this is a grapevine, that I, a cutting that I took, and something's broken it. Oh dear, look at that. It's either Muscat Blot or Lake Mont. I spoke a lot about these in the past, but something's damaged it, hasn't it? Not happy about that. Never mind. 
Okay, here we have Worcester Pearman, a great British apple. Again, expecting this tree to grow and do well, so we'll see how this one does. Only been in and bought it to the last dormant season, again from mail order trees, so we'll see how this one does. Got my strawberries in the tubs down here, and these will, you can see they're dying back now, which is what happens in the cold weather. Perfectly hardy to grow here in the UK and similar climates. And what I'll do in the summer, again, is I'll pick up these buckets and I'll put them in the polytunnel. I, um, you know, I had previous experience obviously with strawberries and anyone who's grown them outside will know that uh, slugs and birds, birds in particular, absolutely adore strawberries, which you know, you can't really blame them for, can you? So what I'll do is I'll put them in the polytunnel as I did last year, or earlier on this year I should say, and uh, they did indeed do very, very well. So looking good there. Now my bed here in the polytunnel all covered over what I want to do is probably create a soft fruit bed or something along those lines here. I'm thinking of putting some raspberries in, something like that, some raspberries and um, I'm probably not going to put blueberries in there because they have to create specific soil conditions and I, I've found better success doing that in tubs because you can control and create the acidic soil environment, you know, using ericaceous compost, ericaceous feed and things such as what's it called, coffee ground, etc., in order to help create that. But, um, yeah, so probably raspberries, maybe a gooseberry. I do love gooseberries. Got videos on my channel about gooseberries, how to take a gooseberry cutting. You want to check that one out if you want to take a gooseberry cutting because uh, you can source your own gooseberry bushes for free if you do that. And uh, five years' time, you can have some really good uh, gooseberries coming your way if you just take the cuttings now, so you might want to check that one out. So yeah, a lot of work to do still. Going to be hopefully getting on with that uh, when the weather improves. Obviously at the moment the weather is not conducive to it, but uh, next week it's apparently going to warm up a little bit. Temperatures about seven or eight degrees during the day and warm as well. So hopefully be able to do at least something if I can get like a morning free, just do a little bit of work around here. <coughs> around here. But, really happy with these trees hope you guys enjoyed that video I always find that uh, walking around the garden at uh, times when the weather is not ideal that's when quite often I get my ideas because you often when the weather is good and you walk around you sort of get carried or I can get carried away with just how good things are going and how they're looking and then you just end up maybe staring at it and resting on your laurels but uh, when the weather's not so good and the time of year is sort of gardener's rest time if you want to call it that you can really start planning and thinking because you start thinking what what you're missing if you don't get it right you know for example had i not put uh, this this peach tree in here and put it outside it probably would have died a leaf curl right now if i'd not put this cherry tree in here and thought about it the birds probably would have got all the cherries last season unless i covered it so have a look round at different times of year, different weather conditions, different times of the day even, and it can sow ideas in your head of things that uh, you want to do and things that you, you could do, and you start thinking of you know, what you want to have. So for example, I want to have probably some currant bushes, and one I'm thinking of is White Versailles, which is a really beautiful white currant, very sweet, and I know someone that I will be able to get some cuttings from, and I will then proceed to take some cuttings, probably in a few work and do them now actually, any time it's dormant, and then you can have your own beautiful white currants. So start thinking and planning, and uh, spring is not too far away now, all being well. Take care, speed.